Hi, Carrie Fadrick here with you for today's edition of Eye on St. Lucie. And in just a few moments, we'll have an interview with the movers and shakers of this community's third annual Lights On After School Showcase. If you've not participated in one of these first two events, you may be asking, what's that? Well, Lights On After School is where St. Lucie Public Schools unites with other communities across the nation for a two-day spotlight on after-school programs and activities. Over 30 program coordinators from across St. Lucie County representing a variety of interests and academic and athletic and artistic events rally together for program awareness on October 2nd and again on October 12th. We also have special guests from Transportation joining us today to let you in on the special incentive program that's sparking a lot of positive energy on those big yellow buses. Well, we're so glad to have you all here today because today's show is going to be very exciting and informational for our community. Um, a lot going on for children and it's important for our parents to know about the activities that are taking place before school, after school and on the weekends. And with transportation, it's also so important to know about the um, unique opportunities to get places and to know what's going on in, with the culture of our uh, transportation, um, how students are behaving and how we're being very systematic with um, expectations on buses and in our classrooms because we want all of our schools and uh, access to transportation to be very similar so that children know expectations. So this is just a, a fantastic show to kick off the year. Kimberly Roberts, Don Carter, why don't you take a few moments and just tell our audience what you do to support all the good things happening in St. Lucie. Kim? My name is Kimberly Roberts. Um, I'm the 21st Century Program Manager and, and I support, along with my counterpart Terrence Platt, which he couldn't be with us today, but I'd like to mention him as well. But we support the 21st Century Programs in our school district. Um, great news, we did start out having seven, now we have 11 schools with the 21st century program. So I'll be speaking more of those in, later on in the session. And Don? First of all, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Don Carter. I'm the Transportation Director for the school district, along with our coordinator, Jimmy Hardison, and a fantastic team of bus drivers, bus aides, garage staff, as well as office personnel. We provide safe, comfortable transportation to over 23,000 students daily. Uh, besides regular routes, we also provide field trips and after-school activity runs. And you know what, I'm just going to take a moment and offer congratulations to you and big kudos to your entire team because um, you also supported our community in our recent Hurricane Irma uh, event because you provided transportation to and from our shelters. You're always there whenever we have a need and thank you to you and your team. Never, never do you say no. Our team always steps up. Uh, we provided uh, transportation for both Matthew, Matthew last year mm -hmm. and Irma this year. Mm -hmm. This year was a little different with the addition of the new pet shelters. Not only were we evacuating human evacuees, we had some four-legged ones as well. Yes. And you know what? Our four-legged friends are just as important to us as um, our other family yes, members. They are. So, so thank you, and I'm sure our community thanks you. <laughs> All right. So, Kim. I gave just a brief little teaser about lights on after school. This is the third year and you are becoming quite expert at lights on after school. I remember uh, speaking with you uh, the very first time you ventured into this and your excitement has not waned one little bit. Uh, you continue to gain momentum for this. This year though, we've got just a little different look and feel. We've gone from one day to a two day event. Tell me why. And what are the benefits to the community? Well, we started off, um, it's a national event um, sponsored by After School Alliance. They've had um, the event going for 18 years. Um, and we jumped on board, like you said, three years ago. And we wanted to do it on the national day, uh, which is the third Thursday of each of, in October. However, getting feedback from our organizations that participate, it was really a struggle for them to be in both places at once on the same day. 
And some organizations could not participate, which made us sad because guess who's missing out? Our community. Um, so we rethought, uh, went back to the drawing board and talked to some people and we had two days. And also another big reason was um, the venues. Our city of Port St. Lucie um, sponsors the um, venue. Um, and so the day that we chose was available to them. And then um, the PAL Center. We chose the day that was good for the PALs and the community. So having it on two days, hopefully we have more vendors. And even with the hurricane, we are moving quite forward and our organizations are coming. So, And, and I do recognize that. I know that people call you as well as you are calling uh, organizations. So you're correct. You've got a lot of community support mm -hmm. and they're, they're asking you for can I have a table, can I be there, mm -hmm. um, because it's important that they help get the word out. So it's important to our organizations that support activities before school, after school, and on the weekend. Why is it so important that our parents and our students participate in this? You know, all, parents have to work. So one of the big fears, I think, for parents, and this is a personal from a parent perspective, is that what are our kids, what are our kids doing if they're sitting at home? Mm -hmm. What's the benefit to that? Yeah, they might be doing their homework, and yeah, they might be doing it with quality, and it might be getting done. But there are so many other um, that there are so many other um, ideas, um, activities that can be positive if they're with doing other activities like sports. We all know what a coach provides. We know coaches provide a great deal of structure for our kids when they're in sports. But it's not just sports. It's um, some kids may need mentoring. Some kids may need to be involved or want to be involved in a community service activity. Sometimes parents don't often know what is available and what's out there. So the uh, one, one goal of our after school expo is to give parents an opportunity to see what goes on in our community. St. Lucie County has so much to offer our youth before school, after school, weekends, holidays, the summertime, and parents just aren't aware. So we're trying to make it easy for them have it in a one-stop shop. They get to see all the different stuff that's out there for their kids that fits their needs. Or what if their child wants to try fencing? I don't know how many people know we have fencing in our county mm -hmm. um, for, for kids to try. So this is an op opportunity for them to see, maybe let their kids try it. Mm -hmm. So many of our organizations are giving away scholarships to our kids to be able to try the different activities provided. Well, you know, you just mentioned something, scholarships. Um, People may think that after school activities equates to dollars. Um, after school activities equates to transportation. How do I get there? Don, you're here. We have activity buses. And, and I think we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But we have ways to eliminate barriers. So what are, what are scholarship opportunities? Will this be mentioned at the after school event, Expo. Lights On After School? Absolutely. Um, one of the conversations that we have with our organizations is that they provide, if there's a student that fills out a survey that meets the requirements for the, to provide a survey or a scholarship, and when I say scholarship, I meant money for them, for them to try the activity or to be a part of the activity for no minimal or no cost, mm -hmm. like a sliding scale. Right. Um, many of the I shouldn't say many, all of them have agreed to allow, to offer that to a, student, to a student. So the bottom line is, don't assume. Come out, explore the options, ask questions. Absolutely, thank you, that was very much so, absolutely. You know, we want to give parents the array, and not just because of the activity itself or what it offers and the benefits to their child, but also that there's so many things out there that's no cost at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of a child's time, like a community service event, mm -hmm. or uh, being an explorer in one of our police departments, or our sheriff's department, or the fire department. That costs the kids no money, but they're, they're a part of something good. They're a part of something with quality, and that costs no money. But the problem, another barrier that we hear from parents is transportation. How do I get my kid there? So um, we have the county who has a program. Um, for free transportation for the child and the parent, and they will be there to disseminate that information and share how that works. So parents, it's not just about money, 
if you have a barrier with money or if you have a barrier with transportation, please come out to the expo. We hopefully have all that covered for you to receive information so you can move forward and allow your child to benefit from after school activities. And when I say after school, not just directly, weekends, holidays, and summer camps. So she mentioned the transportation that our county provides for free. We know that's a, a great benefit, and that's a program that really just started. Um, we've already we've had for several years the county providing some free transportation for students when they showed their library card, which was really neat. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we continue to do more and more for our citizens in St. Lucie. Dawn activity buses. We as a district. Um, provide transportation for students for so many things, um, band, athletic activities. What are some of the other things that our transportation team does to give students that enriching experience beyond the pure academics of a school day? Well, we were thrilled to be able to reinstate what was known as the courtesy buses to the middle and high schools. Mm -hmm. uh, each school, uh, if they choose, are able to have up to two buses each afternoon to help kids get home from whatever kind of extracurricular activity they may be involved in. Uh, it's up to the schools. They can use them as they choose. Some of them uh, offer tutorial programs. Uh, and again, any, any kind of extracurricular activity, um, they can get away home afterward to allow them to, to participate in those uh, activities. Mm -hmm. And Kim, elaborate a little bit more on some of the activities that are available through 21st Century, one of the programs that you really help support? So students in the 21st century program, if a barrier is for a parent to pick them up, you're saying that they can ride the activity bus or the courtesy bus home after the program? Yes, it's up to the schools to use those as they choose. Like I said, mm -hmm. they have any number of activities that mm -hmm. are provided at the school uh, after the regular school day. And uh, they ask us for certain times that they want the buses to arrive based on the program they're offering. And uh, we offer what we call community stops. In most cases, the buses stop uh, in each community served by that school so that there's a central location, usually with a parking lot nearby that parents can congregate and mm -hmm. wait on their children without having to go all the way to the school to pick them up. So if I'm a parent and my, I would like my child to attend the 21st century, is there an additional paperwork that is required for them to be able to You ride? would just need to check with the school and find out you know, how they use their buses and uh, what times they, they depart each day. Okay. See? So we, another barrier. Another overcome. barrier overcome. There's always a way. And St. Lucie Public Schools is always looking for ways in order to expand opportunities for children, um, make things more accessible. And sometimes, you know, it's that, that working together and that partnership with home and school in order to provide these opportunities. So that's one of the benefits of Lights On After School. We learn so much more from each other and how we can continue to work together and these organizations coming together that's it's just a tremendous opportunity to uh, do so much more for our children and for our community it takes a village to raise a child I keep saying that <laughs> alrighty so another thing that is absolutely fantastic in our opportunities to work together is the common language that we use and the common expectations. So within our school system, we have behavioral expectations um, for how we know that we should be um, coaching students to behave in a, an appropriate um, setting. And we've transitioned that to our buses with uh, a system called CHAMPS and with a system of positive behavior rewards um, called PBIS, Positive Behavior uh, Instructional Support, with uh, bus bucks. I believe that's what they're called, right, Don? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so that's something new this year. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because it seems to be going over very, very well. And um, I know that uh, you and your team are seeing very positive results um, both on the bus and our schools are experiencing positive results before and after school as children are coming and leaving our facilities. Yes. Well, obviously, we've had bus rules in place as long as we've had buses. Mm -hmm. uh, the drivers for years have participated in whatever program each school has had. Mm -hmm. Well, since a bus can run as many as three schools, they've had to keep up with three different sets of bucks, if you will, the rewards that are given out by each school. So this year, we decided to do things a little different. So the schools have had the CHAMPS program, which basically defines a way of behavior. Uh, so we took that model, moved it to the buses. So now when a child gets on the bus, he sees the same information that he sees in the school, 
uh, and therefore has the same expectation, very clear, and we consolidated into uh, one set of rewards called bus bucks. The bus bucks can be used just the same as whatever school the child attends has in place, and that way we only have to keep up with one piece of paper instead of up to three, as I mentioned, and the expectations for the students are the same as what they see in the schools. For example, the voice level that they're used on the bus. They're expected to talk quietly among themselves, except when the bus is, for example, at a railroad crossing or has some other emergency where they need quiet. So it's the same expectation in the bus as it is in the school, so it's easier for the students to understand what's expected of them. Mm -hmm. And I know each of those letters, the C, the H, the A, the M, the P, and the S, has a specific meaning, and those are posted on the buses just as they are in the classrooms. Yes, Again, a consistent message, that's mm -hmm. what we're after. Mm -hmm. It's common message, common language. So our bus drivers, our teachers, our children, everyone is um, speaking the same language, common expectations, and it just makes things so much more easy and consistent as we're working together as a united team to help children and their success track from pre-kindergarten all the way to 12th grade and beyond on their college and career track. Uh, any specific ahas or um, comments from your driving team uh, about this new program? Well, one of the things we did, we streamlined our reporting process. Uh, we were one of the last departments to be on paper system for reporting uh, incidents to the schools. Uh, the driver still has to fill out a piece of paper, but we have a dedicated individual now that enters all of those for the transportation department. So they go directly to the schools and we're able to track those and provide some feedback to the drivers as to what action was taken afterward, which is a plus. Uh, just like the teacher expects to find out what happens after a, a referral is written, our drivers are entitled to that information as well. So we've got a much more streamlined uh, system now to provide feedback for the drivers. Okay, very good. All right, so um, thoughts on what perhaps you would like to leave as a, a very important positive message to our parents and our community members about being ever present with lights on after school and uh, the opportunity that's coming up with October 2nd and 2nd, October 12th. 12th. Yes, I'm a firm believer that I can't educate a child by myself or even my own child. I feel like there's other um, coaches, mentors in our community who need to help with that, teachers. Having a child in an, a quality um, after school program can eliminate, uh, can eliminate um, ch uh, achievement gaps. It can provide a child with an expectation, good expectations. It can provide a child a road maybe that they didn't think that they could be on, whether that would be a sport, maybe that could be um, trying a different, trying something different in their life. I encourage parents to come to Lights On After School. We've tried to work, we've worked really hard with organizations to give them an array of what goes on in our community. Um, whether you're an elementary child or a high school student, there's internships that I'm not sure all high school students are aware of. That will be spotlighted at After School Expo this year. Super excited about what there is to come. Please come October 2nd at the uh, Community Center in Port St. Lucie, and please come to the one in um, the Powell Center on October 12th. And if you need more information, I know that St. Lucie Public Schools has this on their social media site. A lot of our um, city organizations have it on their social media sites, additional information, so that the information is out there. All you have to do is click on Facebooks and Twitter, and it's usually there. Yes, Do a yes. little search. Um, also, they can call you. And what number would they reach you? Um, right now, I don't have a phone, so um, but they can reach me at 772-528-0008. That's a temporary number until we get um, our phones up and running because we were not going to allow a hurricane to stop us from spotlighting what we have in our community and uniting what our kids need. Okay, also another wonderful opportunity to plug the fact that St. Lucie Public Schools will always rise above 
We did have a little bit of flooding in our district offices. All of our district offices have been relocated to school sites, but nothing is going to stand in our way nope. of doing what is right for children. So, that's right. That's yes. our priority. We always have a way to, to right, overcome. Don? Right. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, Don, any last minute things about transportation that you would like to share with our viewing audience? Well, it's a busy time in transportation. We were fortunate to be awarded an EPA grant this year of $200,000 to help with the placement of old buses. Uh, we've just recently received the new buses, and just yesterday the invitation for next year's grant came out, so it's a never-ending cycle. We hope to be uh, participating and awarded that again next year. We're also upgrading some of our older camera systems. We have amazing technology on the buses these days. Uh, again, our goal is to provide safe, comfortable transportation, and a lot of that safety involves our technology and electronic equipment. And we do have um, definite, definite safety standards in place. All of the new buses come with those three-point safety harnesses, correct? Yes, all of our new buses. Uh, the state of Florida since 2001 has required lap belts. We've taken that a step further, and the latest technology is the three-point, the lap and shoulder belts, like you're familiar with in your own vehicle. And uh, for the last three years, all of our buses come with those, and we'll continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. So safety is... Um, primary for what we do in the classroom, in our buses, just like our expectations. We've got consistency in the classroom with our buses and um, try to make sure that everything we do is for the best interest of our children, whether it be academic, extracurricular, transportation-wise. We want to unite with uh, our parents and our community to provide the very best opportunities so that St. Lucie County is a great place to learn, to grow, and to achieve. I thank you both for being here today, and I look forward to participating in Lights On After School, and I look forward to seeing many, many, many children take advantage of our transportation opportunities, both with St. Lucie County School System and with St. Lucie County in general. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for having us. Yes, thank you. I'm Carrie Patrick, and this is WLX-TV. On behalf of the station's team, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. That's all for this show, but we invite you to follow us like us and watch us on our social media outlets. And as always, keep your eye on St. Lucie.